All right. Okay. Here we are. Okay. Can you all see my screen? Yes. I see nodding, so that nodding means yes. <laughs> okay. Let me see where I can move this so it doesn't bother much. I have no idea where I can move it. Maybe there. Okay. Um, and I'm going to minimize this. There you go. Okay. So thank you, everybody, uh, for joining us this evening. My name is Cynthia Ellenstar. I'm the program manager at Unidos Now. And one of the programs that I'm responsible for is a mentor uh, program. So I'm really happy uh, to be here tonight speaking with all of you. And I, I hope that this is a, a fruitful experience hmm, uh, for you and that you help us also improve the program so that as time goes by, we can make it better and better. So before uh, I start talking, I would like to know a little bit about you. I know some of you, uh, but I don't know others. So let's do this really fast because we have a relatively large group tonight. Um, one by one, I'm going to be calling your names and I would like you to say your name, your background, whatever you want to share about your uh, professional experience. Um, also, if you have any mentoring experience and one thing that you would like to learn tonight. Okay, so let's go here. All right, um, Hector, would you like to start? Oh, you have to unmute yourself, please. <laughs> Was that Victor you said? Oh, Hector. Hector, Hector. Hi, Victor, how are you? <laughs> I'm Hector Tejada, I'm the Director of Education at Unidos Now. Um, my background is basically, um, I worked in corporate America mostly and retired here about six or seven years ago. Found Unidos Now and have been working with them ever since. And I've been mentoring in many forms since then. And one thing I'd like to learn tonight, I, I'd like to learn how I make I can make it easier for mentors, how I can support them. Uh, and I, I think some of the mentors sometimes are concerned they don't have a lot of the background in college prep. And but I'm here to assure them that we do have the background and we need those now. And if they're if they need help in any aspect of the technical process, we're there to help. So that's what I hope. Uh, I can so pass on to people tonight. Thank you, Hector. Wonderful. Sandy, would you like to go next? Sandy Chase? Yeah. yeah. Um, my name is Sandy Chase, and I've been um, associated with this, this great organization for a while now. Um, in terms of mentoring, I would say that I would want to pass on skills that other, well, that, that students could then be seen as role models for others. So it would be like a Velcro effect. Whatever I can uh, share with others for the purpose of those people learning different skills, especially how not to procrastinate, um, I, would, I would say I would want them to be able to do the same. Okay, and one thing that you would like to learn uh, tonight from this training? Um, how, how to do that. All right. How to instill in others the importance of mentoring. Very good, thank you. Okay, Victor, now it's your turn. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is uh, Victor Rivera. I'm a retired, uh, re retired, first retirement was from the Air Force, and then I'm also retired uh, as a system engineer from Raytheon Corporation. I did mentor a, uh, a student uh, this past year, uh, uh, very successful, I, I enjoyed it tremendously. I think she got a lot out of it, was accepted into the UF engineering program, which is a, a, a big accomplishment for her, something that she was always wanted to do. Uh, for myself, I'm just hoping to become a better, learn a few more things, become a better mentor. Uh, I enjoyed the experience this past year and looking forward to doing it again in future years. Great, thank you so much. Okay, uh, Nadia? Um, I'm Nadia Gross, and um, I've been uh, in business. I've owned my own businesses and been an entrepreneur pretty much most of my life. 
I graduated from FSU a very long time ago and just moved back to Florida a year and a half ago because my husband retired from the police department in Las Vegas and we wanted to make a change and come to the tropics again. Um, we both grew up in Puerto Rico, so we, um, I went to school there. We're completely bilingual in both languages. And I actually didn't come to the States until I went to Florida State. And as far as mentoring experience, well, our, our son has been um, the greatest uh, opportunity for, for mentoring. And, um, he's been very successful as a college uh, soccer athlete. And just this uh, fall, he's going to start University of Florida in the law school program. And all along the way, we've gone, you know, from high school applications, we, he applied to like 20 different universities and writing personal statements and letters and getting recruited and marketing himself. So we, we've gone through a whole gamut of experiences. But um, other than him, I also was the, the manager for the soccer team when he was in high school. So I started a program to help those kids learn how to market themselves to college coaches and get recruited because a lot of those kids didn't have the funds or the means to go to college, mm -hmm. but they had talent in soccer. They just didn't know how to get into in front of a college soccer coach. You're right. So yeah. I started helping with that. Great. Thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. You're welcome. Wonderful. Uh, Thomas? Uh, Thomas Jones? Is that who you're speaking to? Yes, well, yeah. Would you like okay. to tell us a little bit about your be, background? Yes. I seem to be pictured incognito at this point. I'm uh, somehow not on the screen, but uh, believe me, it really is the Tom Jones, <laughs> is the name. Um, we believe you. Uh, I was a mentor two years ago and three years ago with Unidos. I was not a mentor last year because I was uh, recovering from uh, surgery. Um, I am still not absolutely committed to this current school year because of that. My walking is not great. I'm 76 years old. I'm retired. I was a college professor in Connecticut. Uh, and I guess my, my, my question is how to uh, walk that fine line with a mentee uh, between uh, trying to uh, develop them and trying to kind of understand where they are and kind of sympathize with them. I think that's a tough, uh, a, a, a tough line to walk sometimes. Yeah, I, I agree. It certainly is. Okay, yeah, we'll, we'll see what we can do to, to help you figure that out. Thank you. Don? Uh, Don Oman, would you like to? Hello? Okay, I Hi, I'm sorry, Mike. Yeah, no, you're fine. I keep cutting in and out, apologies, um, but hopefully <laughs> I'll get through my quick introduction. Uh, I, I am a retired finance professional and uh, I spend about six and a half, seven months a year in Florida. Unfortunately, that, that time is coming to an end for this year, so I hope to try again to get involved uh, in the fall when we're back. I have mentored a student previously up in Brooklyn, New York from freshman year of high school into college, and I'm, I'm pleased to say he's now a successful college junior, doing very well. And I was anxious to find, uh, to get back involved and find another one or two students that I might be able to help. And I guess my question is, being new to Need Us Now, um, I'd like to learn more about how the interactions are generally done with respect to balancing communications with the student and with the students' uh, guardians and, uh, and or parents, and how to best balance that approach. All right, very good, thank you. Wonderful. Um, let's see, Deanne? Hi, my name's Deanne Bauer, and I'm retired now. Um, I've had a creative background over the years, and I've done some marketing for a manufacturing company, but you know, I've enjoyed uh, handling couple students here with Unidos now that have just been phenomenal and the experience was very very rewarding I look forward to helping more students um, I guess my main question is the best way to organize 
each time I meet, I don't necessarily make notes and I don't necessarily communicate out what happens, but I try to make sure they know that they can communicate with me at any time and develop that relationship early on is, is very helpful, but I'm, I'm weakest with letting the parents know and letting Unidos now know. Great question, and actually we will cover that. Thank you, Diane. Um, let's see, uh, Ginger. Oh, you have to unmute yourself, please. There you go. My name is Ginger Ship. Um, I teach at the College of Osteopathic Medicine. It's a um, local medical school here. Um, I have been mentoring um, for needles now for almost three years now. And, and what I hope to learn is I hope to learn new methods of mentoring. There's always something new to learn. So I'm looking forward to um, learning more this evening. Great, thank you. Sarah, Sarah Hernandez. Hi, sorry to arrive a little bit later. My name is Sara Hernandez and um, just open mind. That I don't have specific questions. Looking forward to learning from you all. Wonderful, thank you. Um, Allison? Hi, I'm Allison Archbold. I'm an estate planning attorney and a former Marine Corps judge advocate. Um, I've mentored for Take Stock, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, and I'm currently a mentor for Poker Law Academy and I'm hoping to figure out how to help my mentee get into a four-year school with a free ride. <laughs> right. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, thank you. Lynn? Hi, I'm Lynn Wentworth. I'm a retired business executive, and I've worked mostly in the telecommunications business. I've mentored in business before, but I've never mentored students. I do have two grown girls who both graduated from college, though, so I at least have that experience. And uh, the questions that Don and Deanne raised are similar to mine, and that is just how to balance interacting with the student and, and the family and just keeping everyone um, apprised without violating confidences or anything like that. Very good. Thank you. All right. I'm taking notes so that then we you know we can try to cover everything. Or we don't cover tonight, well, we will follow up. So don't, don't worry about that. Uh, Maggie, would you like to go next? Please unmute yourself first. Why can I mute you here? Uh, let me see. I lost Maggie. There you go. Hi, you can hear me now? Yes. Okay. I'm Maggie Gap. I'm a retired Episcopal priest. Um, and that was the second career. My first career was uh, to be a college admissions uh, person at Mount Holyoke College in Massachusetts. And in both careers, mentoring is about 80% of what you do one way or another. Um, so I feel like I have a lot of experience in the mentoring process. The learning process is uh, the different schools that um, I don't know about and so that I'm not mentoring people into the wrong kind of school for who they are. Okay, thank you. All right, Heather? Hi, um, can you hear me? Yes. Right? Okay, just to make sure. um, <clears throat> my name's Heather O'Dell. I am currently a, um, an English and Spanish teacher I have, um, I've taught both online and also in the classroom. Um, I've had ESL experience, ESOL, I've taught adults and middle school to high school. Um, I haven't had any actual mentoring experience. I, I guess teaching, unless you count teaching as mentoring experience or tutoring, of course, I, I suppose they are. Um, not specifically mentoring, I suppose, in the same um, sense of the word that we're using here, but similar related. Mm -hmm. um, I guess my, what I'd like to learn is just um, the different ways I can make a difference, nothing super specific. Great. Hey, well, you're in the right place for that. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Diego? Hello, everyone. Hi, my name is Diego Villada. I teach theater at New College of Florida. 
I'm excited to to be able to um, to give back. That's you know my primary reason for um, for being part of Unidos now, and um, I'm very excited on this call to learn about like what are the norms, right? So if every every place I work and and go and do um, you know artistic work, there are like specific norms of of you know the lexicons being used and the the words that we so that we are all having a uniform way of communicating, and that's mm -hmm. that's what I'm I'm here to learn, and then how I might fit into the existing infrastructure. Great, thank you. Thank you for joining us tonight. Sharon? Hi, I'm Sharon and I'm driving down the road so I'm not going to have my video on, but um, this is my third year working with Unidos now as a mentor. My first year, I'm, unfortunately, I was a bit of a mentor failure. My mentee didn't really communicate with me very much. But this last year, I'm very happy to say my mentee was um, very happy to have whatever limited advice I could offer and help I could give. She was um, did exceptionally well and ended up being accepted to five really top schools and chose Cornell as her um, path to go into international relations. I come from a background, I'm an attorney and a mediator and a mediator trainer. And so I, but I come from a background where when I originally got done law school, I was working um, with a group Karesin up in Washington DC in a day labor project and a refugee project. When I moved down to Florida, I sort of, uh, well, I was a single mom and raising my daughter and got her through school, through high school and into college. And so when I was looking for a way to reach out in the community and become involved again now that she's flown off and I've become a single mom, a, a empty nester. I felt like Unidos now really brought me back to my roots of working in the community. So I'm, I've enjoyed my time, but I really wanted to attend tonight to see how I could improve my mentoring skills to work with another student. Great. Thank you so much for joining us and please uh, drive safely. <laughs> Um, Jennifer, now it's your turn. Hi, my name is Jennifer Kaba. I am a staff accountant at the Bell Stores, Bell Outlet Store corporate office. I, um, I am a Take Stock and Children graduate. I've had the same mentors uh, since 2011. Um, I now mentor a Take Stock student. I've been mentoring her for a year and a half. And I also have a mentee through Nidos now. I've been mentoring her for about five months now. Um, because I have a mentor, I understand the importance of mentoring. So that is why I do it. Uh, that's why I give back to the community. And something that I would like to learn uh, about today is the different opportunities for students with different immigration status. So either for college, community college, university, or technical school. Very good, thank you. Yeah. Beautiful. And uh, Lou? Hello, I am Lou. I'm a software engineer. I'm originally from New York City. Um, I also lived in Northampton for about 15 years and so near Mount Holyoke, you know, that was mentioned before. Um, and I have been a big brother in the past and um, I'm hoping to you know, learn anything, any, anything more I can learn about um, college prep, the admissions process, anything like that would be great as I only had to do it many years ago. Great, great, yeah. Well, so I think I covered everybody. If I have not named somebody, uh, please unmute yourself and speak up now or you missed your chance. <laughs> uh, but before we, I go on, uh, and I want to apologize um, that I left here for the last, uh, but actually she, she's really important in our team, and I wanted to, to um, introduce you to my colleague Robin Groel. Robin is an education consultant, and she works very closely with us, uh, particularly with the students in the Future Leaders Academy in the college prep track. Um, Robin will be presenting a little bit later on, but if you want to say a few words now, Robin, please go ahead. Yeah, um, I'm Robin, and I, I have uh, worked as a college counselor. I started off in college admissions and became a college counselor 
1980. So I have done this a, a quite a while. I worked at seven different prep schools um, in Europe and the Caribbean, and then back here in the United States. Um, I came to Bradenton, Florida in 2004 uh, to direct a college counseling program at St. Stephen's Episcopal School here in Bradenton. I was there developing their program for six years. And then um, 10 years ago, I became an independent college counselor hoping to work with local students and particularly some first generational students. And it was through that experience that I met um, Catalina, who at the time was beginning their educational initiative with Unidos Now. And I started working with her and we together developed, um, I guess, the beginning of some of the educational initiatives, which have, which have grown and expanded. And it's been a great privilege to work with probably over 80 students now that have graduated from this program. Um, they go to colleges all over the country. Um, many of them go to colleges that they have never even heard of before. They came to our program. Mm -hmm. And I think that they develop a sense of confidence and much of that confidence comes from their mentors. So I thank you so much for your willingness to uh, participate and to contribute your time and expertise. Um, we are so fortunate, Cynthia, to have such a great group mm -hmm. of people with such a wide variety of academic backgrounds and personal backgrounds that will transform the students that we're working with. So um, exactly. I look forward to, I'll be speaking with you a little bit later. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Robin. Really appreciate your words. So, well, now, yes, we're going to get started. I'm going to share my screen again. <laughs> All right. And why is this? Okay, so we already went through the introductions. And, and in addition well, to, to being a program manager, uh, I'm from Argentina. I came to these countries eight years ago. Um, my background is pretty uh, diverse. Um, I was an entrepreneur for 10 years. I had my own travel company in Argentina. Um, I also um, obtained two teaching certifications to teach English speakers of other languages. So I did that for a while. I also work as a legal assistant supervisor at the public defender's office. Um, and I kept on exploring until I found my, my true calling, which I, I, I felt it was working with uh, immigrant families and primarily working on education. And Unidos now has it all. And uh, I couldn't be happier to be where I am. Um, it doesn't feel like work. It's something that I, I truly enjoy, no matter how many hours I work a day. And I hope that um, this passion that I feel shows in, in the work that I do and in how I can assist you throughout the mentoring program. So before we um, talk about the mentoring program itself and what a mentor is, I wanted to show you this very brief video of one of our scholars. She has just finished the Future Leaders Academy. She's on her way to college in, I mean, a few months. And this is her personal statement that she read a few days ago when we had decision day online. Oh, I'm sorry, it was my, my bad. There you go. Yeah, I'm not hearing any video, any voice, any sound. You cannot hear it? No. no. When you when you share a video, you have to go to your um your settings on share screen and tell it to at the bottom it oh I can't do it while you're doing it. Um at the bottom of the share screen it'll say maximize or enhance oh. something. Let's try now. I I click share computer sound. Can you please yeah, tell me you if it works yeah. now? Hello all, I am a senior enrolled in Riverview High School's International Baccalaureate Program. Hello friends, my name is Vanessa Tassesuero and I am a storyteller. From where the palm tree sends rumba with the wind and the cool Caribbean waters touch my skin at high tide dusk. I am an odd mix of morena, blanquita, and negrita. My skin is gold and pale and brown and a few shades darker than most girls at school. A few shades darker than my sister, even. I am a true Cubana, 
a Latina with the big hips and the full lips and the sharp tongue that cannot and will not sit still. I am a storyteller and a dreamer. And even now when I'm 18, I'm dreaming still. I dream about double majoring in English in communications and later on pursuing a business administration's master. I dream about attending Barnard College, a dream come true given my recent acceptance. I dream about owning and running a social change magazine that not only tells true stories, but also evokes the emotions necessary for its readers to kindle global <laughs> I'm dreaming still. The things that fill my heart today are not just for me, but for my community. This I learned from Unidos Now. I learned that my life's purpose is to meet different people to write different stories. Thanks to Unidos Now, these dreams of mine in many ways have been realized. They introduced me to my mentor, Carrie Sademan, the head columnist of the Sarasota Herald Tribune. Not only does Carrie share my passion for storytelling, but she also is an alum of Barnard College and Columbia University. Having someone who embodies a story I want to call my own really shows that Unidos Now truly cares about knowing every single one of their scholars, every single one of our dreams. With Unidos Now, I learned to dream of tomorrow, and I learned which tools can help me build. And while tomorrow may be a diversity of dream, today is forged by action. And this newfound family, my peers, the dream team, my mentor, Carrie, the whole Unidos Now organization constantly inspires me to not only, as our motto says, dream big, but do big. I am a storyteller and I thank my family for writing my very first chapter. Mamá y papá, Leoni, abuelitos, gracias por esta bella vida que me han regalado y por enseñarme a apreciar y aprovechar sus riquezas. Gracias por nunca subestimar mis sueños, especialmente los imposibles. I am a storyteller and I thank this organization. I thank you donors, I thank you dream team, I thank you Carrie. I thank you, peers. I thank the Berensic Foundation for nurturing my passions by educating me about the value of post-secondary knowledge, elevating all my hopes and dreams, integrating me within this wonderful family, and most importantly, gifting me without ever expecting so much as a thank you in return with pen and paper to write my very own future, my very own story. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> Um, so these are our scholars. So what we do at Unidos Now, we do it for somebody like her, like Vanessa, or for Igor, and Paula, and Luis, and so many other students. And a lot of what we do is thanks, I mean, is possible thanks to you, thanks to the mentors. So you have an extremely important role in our programs. And we want to make sure that you are prepared for it and that you enjoy it and that if you need help, that you can come to us for support. So thank you. Thank you so much uh, on behalf of all of our students and our staff as well. So let's start by wondering, what is not a mentor? Uh, so if somebody wants to uh, use a chat room, um, uh, the chat, I mean, uh, window to type what you think a mentor is, please go ahead. Somebody here? Oh. Mentor guy, okay, very good. Anybody else has an idea? Someone who guides and supports a person? Yes. One more? Advice, all right, yes. Yes, Victor, you're right. Okay, so those are, re yeah, those are definitely uh, words that we associate with a mentor. Yes, correct that, yeah, discover resources. That's a really good one. Hmm? A sympathetic ear to listen and give feedback and ideas. A role model, correct. Exactly, look at it. Hector and Sandy Chase are, are connected, I synchronized, they're all the same. Great, so let's start first by, by seeing what is not a mentor. Hmm? So a mentor is not a social worker, I mean, you could be a social worker uh, as your profession, but that's not your role when you're a mentor. It's not a surrogate parent. It's not a psychologist. It's not a replacement of a teacher or a tutor. 
It's not an ATM. It's not a savior. Okay, this is not what a mentor is expected to be. So now let's see what is a mentor. And here we have a beautiful photo of uh, Bernice and Stefana. This, uh, this is uh, a student who is in our career readiness track of the Future Leaders Academy, and Bernice is her mentor. So let's see, uh, and basically it's what you've said. Hmm? A mentor is a supporter, is an advocate, is a motivator, a role model, a listener, a resource person, and also a friend. And by resource person, you know, uh, we have a lot of wonderful stories of mentors who uh, perhaps th uh, their mentee, for example, wants to be an attorney. Well, so, so their mentor can connect them with somebody who is an attorney in, in the way the mentee perhaps can shadow the, the attorney for half a day or can even go to court with the attorney and experience what the job is actually like. So that's a time of, uh, the type of experiences that we encourage you to do if that's something that uh, you're able to do. So look at this. Um, the quality is not very good, but I thought it was... It was a good message. Hmm? It says, Tom, mentoring is about more than encouraging people to be just like you. And that's something that I would like you to keep in mind when mentoring, especially if this is your first time. Hmm? The idea is not to um, have mentees be like you. The idea is that they can be the best version of themselves hmm? and that you can help them get there. Here we have another wonderful um, relationship between Daniel and his mentor Enrique. Uh, Daniel wants to be a film producer and Enrique is a photographer and filmmaker. So uh, one thing that I always say is that mentoring is a journey of collective discovery. This is something that is a learning experience and a discovery uh, for both mentor and mentee. It's not that the mentor shares knowledge, shares resources, uh, shares time, shares everything and the mentee just absorbs and that's it. It's a two way relationship where you're also going to be learning from the mentee. And if you feel at some point that that's not happening, please let me know uh, and I'll figure out what's not working. But it has to be a mutual discovery. So let's see what the qualities of a great mentor are. I'm sure that you know many of them, but let's take a quick look. Uh, a good mentor challenges the mentee, sets boundaries, is a great listener, an active listener, respects the mentee, guides the mentee towards the answer rather than give the mentee the answer, supports the mentee, is mindful of cultural differences, is invested in the mentee's success, is experienced, and provides construct constructive feedback. And I want to um, stop a little bit uh, where it says is mindful of cultural differences. Uh, you will be mentoring most likely a student who is Latino or come from a Latino family. Uh, and even if the student was born in the States, you will notice that he or she, um, you know, carries the, the Latino culture. And if you're not familiar with it, because you have not had the opportunity to be exposed to it or, or study about it, you will think that some things are weird or unusual at some Point. So um, I just ask you to please be uh, patient and open and respectful. And if there's something that you feel is weird or unusual, as I said, contact me. Uh, I'm not an expert on Latino culture, but I was born and lived in Argentina for 35 years. Um, I also uh, lived in Peru and in Colombia. So uh, I know a little bit and I can probably tell you if that's something that has to do with our culture and, um, or not. And some of you uh, may uh, have already received this information, but uh, for those who haven't, I always like to talk about the stages of a mentoring relationship so that um, there are no surprises when you are paired up with a student. There are four stages, basically. The first one is the beginning of the match. Hmm? You are paired up with a student and you meet with a student. And nowadays it's gonna be online, of course, or by phone. And at the beginning, it's gonna be a bit awkward because you don't know each other and you're gonna feel that uh, maybe, 
oh, the mentee doesn't really uh, talk much or I don't know what to say and um, I'm not sure this is working. Uh, it happened um, recently that uh, a new mentor contacted me and said, Cynthia, I don't think I'm doing a good job because uh, we barely had anything to talk about during our first meeting. So I just wanted to tell you, that's normal. It's like almost any relationship. At the beginning, it's awkward, uh, and it takes some time to get to know each other and to feel comfortable with each other. The next stage is the challenging and testing phase. And here, your mentee will be testing you, will, be see, will try to see how far uh, you are committed in this relationship, mm? how much uh, the mentee can trust you, how much the mentee can um, expect from you. Mm? So at this phase, you may feel also a bit uncomfortable and that's normal. So just be patient, um, be open to answering the questions of your mentee uh, and understand that, again, there, his, the mentee is still trying to get to know you and, and see whether this is something that's gonna be working or not. So um, it takes time, but I can assure you that if you pass this uh, phase, you're gonna get to the next phase which is what we call the real mentoring. Not that the other one is not real, but, but what I mean is that this is where you're going to feel that you're really accomplishing something, that this is indeed working, you're gonna be happy, and you're going to feel like sharing your experience with everybody and asking other people to uh, apply to become a mentor with the needles now. And the mentee also is going to be really happy and will feel that this is indeed working, and I'm so glad that I have this mentor, but, at some point, you're going to get to the last phase, which is the transition toward closure. Mm -hmm. uh, like many of you who are uh, joining us tonight, you have mentees who have just finished uh, FLA and who are going to college in a few months. So you may still stay in touch with them, which is great and I hope you do, but the relationship may not be the same as the one that you've had so far because you no longer have to help the student with writing essays or uh, filling out the college application or uh, looking for scholarships. So it's really important to bring some closure to the relationship. Um, it's proven that when that doesn't happen, it affects negatively the, the student's self-esteem. So if you haven't done it yet, please do. Just schedule a meeting with your mentee and talk briefly about what you've experienced during this year or uh, less together. Uh, talk about the, um, the accomplishments, uh, try to stay positive, and also talk about the goals. Mm? Uh, look, at the, look back and also look forward. And now I want to tell you very briefly about the mentoring program itself at Unidos now. Mm -hmm. The new mentors know about this because I've been telling you, but we have uh, mentors who have been working with us uh, longer and are not familiar with the new guidelines. So please uh, pay attention to this because uh, this is, uh, becomes effective immediately. So uh, whatever we're asking you to do, please, it's something that we would like you to start doing right away. We're going to be talking briefly about the frequency of meetings, protocol for missing or being late to meetings, confidentiality, reporting, Google group, and news updates and reminders. Frequency of meetings. We ask you to please meet with your mentee at least once a month. You want to meet more, no problem, but at least once a month. And by meeting, preferably in person, in a public space, always, could be Starbucks, Dunkin' Donuts, Panera, a library, but of course, nowadays, due to the pandemic, I'm not asking you to meet in person. Uh, so the next option will be online. Hmm? You can meet uh, using Zoom, Google Meet, WhatsApp, FaceTime, or any other app that you are familiar with. If you need help um, scheduling a Zoom meeting with your mentee, just let me know. I'm happy to do that for you. The next option, if online is not available for you for whatever reason, is phone. Mm -hmm. uh, nowadays, uh, young people don't use, I mean, don't speak on the phone much, um, so it may not be the best option for you to connect with your mentee, uh, but it will be the next uh, alternative, okay, after online. And the last uh, alternative will be text message, mm -hmm. because you cannot really have uh, a great interaction by text message, uh, you're missing a lot of uh, cues, but if that's the only option, go ahead, it's better than nothing. 
And always remember to set goals when you talk with your mentee. Mm -hmm. um, that's something that uh, we always encourage to do because in that way you have uh, something to talk about the next time you meet. Mm -hmm. you, you set goals, you set some um, action steps, then let's see how the mentee did mm, next time you meet. What about protocols for missing or being late to meetings? During the first meeting with your mentee, we ask you to please agree with him or with her how you will let each other know if one of you cannot meet at schedule. Mm? You can agree whether you're gonna be letting each other know by phone, by text message, by mail, that's up to you. And also how uh, early in advance, like a day in advance, half an hour in advance, 10 minutes early, it is up to you. But please agree on this on your first meeting. And if your mentee misses a meeting without prior notice or does not reply to your emails, phone calls, or text messages, let me know right away. Mm -hmm. um, in the past, mentors didn't know who they could contact, so uh, they didn't do anything. And maybe after three months of not hearing from their mentees, they, they complained, of course. Um, so I don't want that to happen. And the best way to avoid that is by letting you know that you can call me anytime, email me anytime, and let me know, and I will contact a student and find out what's going on. Confidentiality is a very important component of our program. So uh, we follow the Vegas rule, okay? That means that whatever you speak with a student uh, is something that should remain within the organization. It's not something for you to be sharing with um, other people. But of course, if you notice any red flags or have any concerns about something that your mentee tells you, you should let us know right away. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we have connections with a lot of community partners uh, who can help the families of needles now with, you know, um, uh, psychological help, um, and other type of help. For example, there's um, a, a student who recently told his mentor that uh, they were having a hard time at home and that they didn't have food. Mm -hmm. um, so if you let us know, we can connect that family with uh, food pantries, you know, with organizations that are helping uh, low-income families in the community. Uh, but if you don't let us know, there's nothing we can do. So always uh, stay in touch. Reporting, this is a new thing also in the mentoring program. Mm -hmm. uh, Diane actually mentioned that she didn't know, yeah, what to do after meeting with a student. Okay, what, who should I report? We're working actually right now on an online reporting form. It's not finished yet, uh, but soon we will have it. So you will be able to go online, briefly write a report, and we will get it right away. In the meantime, while we don't have the online report, uh, I ask you to please send me an email after you meet with your mentee. There you have your email address. And the email should include the day and time that you met, a brief summary of the conversation, Nothing confidential. Basically, oh, we, we talked about a uh, career. We talked about university. We talked about the, my mentee's um, interest, something like that. Uh, then a to-do list, hmm, what um, action steps you suggested your mentee to do, and preferably the day and time of the next meeting. It's always advisable that you schedule the next meeting by the end of the previous meeting so that you already have something to look forward to and you avoid having to then connect you know, by text message or email or phone to schedule the next meeting. We also have a Google group that we have just started for the mentors only. It's a private group where all of you can connect with other mentors, um, share ideas, uh, vent whenever you need to vent. Uh, it's something that several mentors told me that uh, they wanted, so now you have it. And it looks like something like this. This is a screenshot of the alumni Google group. It's the same format, but just for you to, to see what it looks like. Here, where the arrow is showing, you're going to see different uh, discussion topics and you can create your own. So for example, if you are looking for resources uh, to share with your mentee out something, you can post it there, the other mentee will read it. And if you can help, go ahead and reply. And again, this is private just for the mentors. Nobody else reads it except for me. Um, and uh, I hope that you can take advantage of this opportunity to connect with other mentors. And last one, news, updates and reminders. If you haven't done it yet, I encourage you to please follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just 
type our name or need us now and you will find, find our account. We are really active on social media. We post a lot of information, a lot of, a lot of news and updates. So uh, you're likely to learn about what your students are doing uh, through these uh, platforms. Also, if you haven't done it yet, subscribe to our newsletter. Uh, this is the link. I'm going to be sharing this slide with you, so you can just click the link and it will take you directly to the page to subscribe to the newsletter. We um, send it monthly and again, it has a lot of news about Unidos Now um, and it's a great way to stay in touch with the organization. And also please read our emails. I know that you receive a lot of emails and it's easy to skip it or delete it, but uh, if we send you an email, I can assure you that it's something important that we want you to be aware of. And we're really mindful about the, the number of emails that we send. So uh, please read it if I send you one or if Robin sent you one. So what's next? Well, uh, the next step is the matching. So we already have the new uh, FLA, or Future Leaders Academy cohort. So those who have not been matched up with a mentor yet, with a mentee yet, sorry, you will be paired up with a mentee soon. You will get an email from me with the contact information of your mentee and also with suggestions for the first meeting. You will also get an email with an invitation to join the Google group that I just uh, showed. And you will also get a link to a survey so that you can tell us how this uh, mentoring training was for you. Um, please be as candid as possible. Uh, we really want to do things better. So um, tell us what you think that we should uh, do to, to make it more meaningful, more uh, engaging, more uh, useful, and we'll do it. So this is it uh, for my part. Um, thank you very much. Here is Nayara, one of our Future Leaders Academy Scholar, and her mom, Janet. And you have my contact information here. And uh, now I will um, ask Robin to um, continue with her portion. Let me see, I'm gonna stop sharing here, sorry. There you go. All right, all yours. Okay, uh, hello everyone. Um, I'm going to share my screen as well and hopefully this will work. Uh, let's see what happens here. So you'll have to tell me whether you see my PowerPoint. Yes. Excellent, okay. Well, um, my portion of this is going to be going through a little bit of the nuts and bolts in terms of how you can be the most effective mentor. Um, we do have a calendar of meetings coming up uh, for our rising juniors and seniors that will be part of our program this summer. Um, there are, it's a two week program. Well, actually it's more than that. And I'm, um, Cindy will probably be going over a little bit more of that. But um, there will be meetings um, starting in June uh, where we'll be meeting with the students on Skype. It will be, or on Zoom, it will be an online program this summer. So we used to be working in the past, we've had our, our sessions over at USS Sarasota Manatee, um, but because the campuses are closed until the fall, we're gonna be doing everything online. So um, they'll be meeting with us and you are welcome to join any of those meetings. Uh, and we'll be going through the different steps. Um, let me see here if I can move this along. Um, Okay, so um, the goal of, of our work with students is not just to help them get into college, but also provide them some of the skills that will allow them to be successful and graduate from college. Um, there's a lot of melt that happens, I think, with students, and they, many campuses struggle, particularly with our first generational students. They often uh, go into the college experience a lot less knowledgeable about what's expected and how to make that transition. Um, in addition, the Latino community is very connected to family. And so for many of them to, to transition into college is a uh, very difficult initial move. So it's part of our effort in the variety of different things that we do along the way, this different steps that we break out, helps the students better understand who they are, where their values are, how to express who they are, how to discover their talents, how to communicate their talents, so that when they go into college, they have a very a stronger sense of who they are and how to move forward. Um, there are lots of different things that we go over during our summer program and things that you'll be working with them as well. Um, for our rising juniors and seniors, they'll be 
um, what we talk a little bit about what colleges seek today, um, how they'll be reviewing the applications, how they can get to know themselves a little bit better so that they can communicate those things through their essays and through their choice of majors. Um, we talk about the test prep and go, um, part of it, um, selecting their college list. These are all topics that you might be referring to um, in your meetings. Um, we'll be helping them develop a resume uh, and um, their college essays. College essays are really a personal statement so that those sense of who they are and how they want to communicate that is often a very key part of the, of the essays that our students write. Um, funding and scholarships, a very big aspect of allowing the students to actually make that step. We are so fortunate, many of our students, um, they do have a very low expected family contribution, if any. And so uh, the colleges will do their best to try to meet the need of the family. Generally speaking, the more selective a college is, the higher their, um, the larger their endowments are and therefore their, uh, their financial aid budget. And we have been very fortunate over the years that many of our students are able to go to colleges out of state where um, all of the financial costs are, are pretty much covered through the grants that the, student, the colleges are able to offer. Um, we also work with a lot of local foundations and assist them with those scholarships and that's part of the, the mentors conversation as well. Um, the senior sessions are, are very similar. We do interviewing skills. Many of um, our students are asked to do interviews, either for admission or for scholarships, um, and uh, the financial aid piece. So what do colleges seek? Um, I'm gonna guess that the vast majority of our uh, mentors here have all gone to college themselves, and many of them gone to graduate school, law school, um, and that, but it may have been some time uh, that has passed and the college application process may have changed a great deal. I think one of the things that colleges are finding today is they have far more applicants than they usually have spaces. And so most of our colleges today are selective. Um, and as a result, it's good to have a better understanding of how do colleges read an application? What are the kinds of things that will help our students stand out? And so ways that they can uh, present themselves in the most favorable light. Generally speaking, the first thing that colleges do is that they take a, they, they take a look at the transcript. And they're looking, for college, they're looking for students that have taken the most rigorous courses that were available to them. Most of our students are involved in either the AP, A's, or IB programs at their schools or dual enrollment. Not all, but most, um, the honors classes. And it's important for students to challenge themselves because colleges will look for students who are able to challenge themselves academically. Um, so taking the most rigorous courses possible. It doesn't mean that a student takes AP courses across the board, but they may take the most rigorous courses in the areas of greatest interest and accomplishment. Um, developing a theme about their intellectual interests. Uh, that can often be seen in, in, the in the transcript. Testing. Now there's been a lot of conversation most recently about testing, as you may know, the SAT and ACT have had to cancel many of their tests over this past spring. So this rising senior class, the class of 21, will be an unusual situation because many of the colleges are already announcing that they will go test optional. For many of our students, this may be an advantage. I've worked with students over almost 30 years and I have seen, I've worked with many international students, students who speak English as a second language, students who are bilingual. And I have found in some cases that those students may not score really well, as well um, against the counterparts that could be a monolingual speaker. And so they may have been a little at a handicap. Um, also, some of our students really haven't had a lot of the run-up that many of other students do, taking the PSAT in the ninth grade, the 10th grade, the 11th grade. We have found that some of our students don't even know to take the PSAT in, as, a, as a junior. And so they've missed out on some of that practice. And that does, uh, at times, hinder their, their performance. So in this rare class of 21, we may find that there may even be more open doors for our students because they may be looking at the testing in a different light since so many students haven't been able to take their tests this past spring. Um, community engagement. So the academic profile, the testing, and the uh, grades, many times students sometimes feel at this stage of their, of their curriculum that they're in their junior year, senior year, they don't have a lot of, of, of um, power over that or control over that, but they have a lot of control over how they engage in the community. 
And that's often the tipping factor. How do students spend their free time? And as a mentor speaking to your students, ask them a little bit about what they enjoy most. Where do they find their happy zone? Because it's those kinds of experiences that may help students key in to the kind of a, uh, an outside engagement that could make a difference for them and a place that they might want to focus their interest um, and their efforts. Um, Colleges are not looking for students that are leaders in every way. And there are all kinds of leaders. Some people like to be captain of the team or might run for a student government or a position within a club. But other students are better followers and they're really the people that make things happen. So that there's lots of ways that all our students can be engaged. The college essay, that's the personal statement. And there's a lot of opportunities there as a mentor to talk with students about what they really care about, where are their values, and how would they like to speak about those given the questions that are there. And recommendations. Um, we, we do recommend that students um, in the spring of their junior year uh, uh, choose a couple of teachers who they think might be able to write a recommendation for them so that the teachers have an opportunity to take a look at, um, to think a little bit about the student and their class concept. And they'll be writing those recommendations usually in, in, October, in August or September, as most applications need to go in in September, October, or November. Um, so checking to make sure that they've asked about the recommendations. And some of our students might not have done it in their junior year, so they'll be doing that in, in August when they get back into class. And then that last part, talent. Um, Performing arts, if they're an athlete, um, legacy can sometimes make a difference. And that's, I think that's less and less today. Most of our students don't have a legacy. They're going to create one. Um, diversity, most colleges are looking for all kinds of students and uh, students that bring a different perspective to enrich the conversation in the dorms and the classrooms. Um, ability to pay, unfortunately, can make a difference. And most of our students don't have that one. So uh, for, for uh, their that's where filling in the financial aid information and making sure that students are timely in their, in their applications for aid. Um, so the planning timetable, and you will be getting all kinds of handouts having to do with the timetable so that as you meet with your adv advisee monthly or maybe even twice a month, you'll have a set as to where they should be and how are they doing. So you'll have some ideas of some target goals on the conversations that you have. But this just gives you a general overview that if you have a student who's a junior, these are some of the kinds of things that you'll be checking in with them. And then there's also one for seniors. Again, you'll be getting a, a, tip, a tip list with this. And um, I believe that Cynthia uh, is in, we're gonna be working together on these monthly newsletters that will go out to mentors so that you have kind of a reminder of the kinds of things that you might want to be bringing up and so that they can stay on track. All right, yeah, and uh, Robin, let me just say that we're also going to be uh, posting this information on the Google group. That's another reason why we'd like the mentors to join it. Wonderful, great. Um, so topics of conversation. We've talked a little bit about, um, about the nuts and bolts type of thing, but I think that many of our mentors and all of you, most of you are experienced mentors and you know that Sometimes the conversation just evolves and asking them how they're doing. Um, how are things in the classroom? Um, I meet with students um, once or twice a month and I usually start the conversation off with how are things? Um, and if I know that they're engaged in sports, how's their season going? Or if they're involved in a club activity, community service, if they're involved in their church, um, if things are going okay with the family, it's kind of just a nice way of stopping in to let, let them know that, that you care about them and that you realize that their greater circle of life impacts this, this part of, of what's going on um, in applying for college. Um, one of the things that I have done that I have found very helpful and maybe something you may want to do is I always um, ask the students, is it okay if I share my review with your parents? And almost always they say yes. And the parents are uh, very appreciative. So that when I send out my review of my meeting, I copy it to the parents and I copy it to Cynthia because she is the one that's collecting the information and I wanna make sure that she's on top of, of it. And that way, if I've missed something with one of my students 
or if she has a concern, she knows where I am and she can get back to me about that. So I think it's really nice to be able to, to, to touch base with the copies um, of the emails and then with the Google group that we'll be doing. Um, so how do students spend their free time? Um, that will tell an awful lot about where someone's values are and helping your mentee find ways to spend their free time productively. Um, I often tell students that, you know, anything go on your resume, everything goes on your resume that's not done in the classroom, if it's not required in the classroom, and it's not talking to your friends on the phone or playing computer games. I mean, even computer games, I suppose, if you're a technology person, that, that may, may be part of the resume. But how they spend their free time um, will be something that will be resonate in the application. All of the applications ask for that. Uh, so it could be athletic, it could be community service or religious life, fine arts, performing arts, leadership. Um, I find the fact that our students, many of them have traveled and they have experiences in other countries. Um, the fact that they're dual language speakers, all of that I think is an academic benefit and um, might have a place on the resume. Um, maybe, maybe they're a leader in the Spanish club. Most of our schools have that. And sometimes our students are a little hesitant to get involved and they need to know that this is part of it. That they, that they should be part of the school community in whatever way they can be. Some of our students need to work and they leave school almost immediately to head off to work or they have babysitting responsibilities or family responsibilities. And sometimes that state that, that limits them in terms of their engagement after school activities. If that's the case, there's a place on the application to communicate that. So um, you want to encourage them to get involved in whatever way I consider childcare as some of the most responsible work that a student can do. Another area of topic might be their areas of interest or careers. Um, we will be working with them and they'll all be doing a personality type test as well as a, uh, a career interest inventory. So they'll have a little bit of understanding of perhaps their type of personality, uh, a little bit of what that might mean and the kind of information that they find most e easily to interpret the types of things that they're, they feel where their comfort zones are, um, and also the kind of maybe careers that might suit their personality. Um, so that will be part of what we'll be doing, and you could always ask them about that. Um, we use the ONET, which is a short form. It's connected with the Occupational Outlook Handbook, um, which has information about all different kinds of careers and is updated yearly um, with, by the Department of, Navy, uh, the Department of um, Labor. The other one that we use and we use often um, is the College Board website has a lot of great resources. And one of the things that you may want to do with your mentee is to go on the College Board with them and take a look at some of those resources. Uh, one of the places that we often go is a place called Road Tip Nation. It's connected to their career finder area of the College Board website. Another topic is what are you looking for in a college? You know, American higher education has the most diversity of higher of, of colleges in the country, in the world. Um, we have large schools, small schools, private schools, um, public colleges. Um, some of the largest institutions in the nation are located right here in Florida, with four of them um, being very popular with some of our students, UF, FSU, USF, and UCF. Um, we have colleges that are located in, in major metropolitan areas, more some that are in suburban, um, some are in small towns. Um, so I think that helping a student think a little bit about the kinds of categories or criteria that would be most important for them will help them kind of hone their list. A lot of times people are attracted to colleges based on their name. And most of us have a relatively limited knowledge of great opportunities that are across our nation. There are probably 400 college communities in our country that are great fits for our students. And probably very few of us know about all 400 of them. But helping students not so much think about a name and trying to say, what do I need to do to get into here? But instead of, what is it that I'm looking for? And do these colleges have what I need or what I want? And that's kind of where we start. And that's why we do the career interest inventories, the personality assessments, we do um, college searches using the College Board website and several others. And this, this is the kind of thing that you could 
be talking to your advisees about, about what's your college list looking like today? And perhaps going online and taking a look at their website and looking at the majors that they have or the courses that they require. Um, location in the country. We encourage students to recognize that there are many colleges and some are nearby and some are further away. Some of our students are very connected to their families and they know they do not want to be far away. And that's fine, that there are many schools that are within four or five hour drive, two hour drive that those students can look at, both public and private, large and small. But some of our students really have an, a dream of looking beyond the borders of Florida. And so helping all students to recognize that this is a tool they can use to try to develop their college list. Um, their major may make a difference, their, the campus culture, that's often one that's overlooked. But campuses in the United States are all very different. Um, some are very open and diverse, and some are a little bit more um, conservative, uh, homogeneous. Um, we do have students who are um, who are gay or lesbian, um, and I do think that for students that think outside the box, that they need to know that there are some communities that will be more welcoming than others. Um, and so campus culture could make a difference. Um, Other things to think about are special programs. Some of our students are looking to get through college quickly and maybe they're looking at a 3-2 program. If they're involved in an AA program, dual enrollment, where they may graduate with 60 credits, some of which may transfer directly into the needs of the, the college requirements. This may open up a, a student that might be able to finish in five years with a, a four years with a master's degree. So uh, if, they, if they have that intention, there are programs that are specifically designed for that. Um, athletics. Um, athletic recruiting is kind of a topic all, all on its own. Um, I have worked with students that are athletic, um, looking to get into um, recruiting for athletes, Division One, Two, II, and Three. Um, there are some special steps they need to go over. We do mention that, and we try to set our, those students aside separately to help them with that process. Uh, commun uh, communicating with coaches, putting together a, a resume, getting on, filling in the athletic questionnaires online. Those are all things. We are here to help you. Um, I recognize this little area of expertise that I have is full of details, but I am here as a sounding board for any of you. So if you feel as if there's a specific detailed idea that you have or a need that your mentee has and you'd like to shoot me an email, give me a call, send me a text, I'm more than happy to get back to you and we can discuss it together. Um, and the cost. That is a big issue with most American families today. Um, many, many families are feeling the squeeze with the cost of college, and our students are certainly no exception. Most of our students would not be able to go to college at all if they were not receiving some sort of scholarship. So I'm gonna, the next couple of slides have to do specifically with Florida. All our students apply to at least one Florida public institution. Uh, four-year college, and we have 12. Um, and um, you will be receiving a matrix, um, and, a, uh, and a matrix will give you a general idea of what the mid 50% range uh, of, of admission is, what the college's specialties are, what their timeline is in terms of admission. This is just a short version of that to go through just briefly. Um, so we have five colleges there at the top. Um, and their enrollment numbers. As you can see, they're, they're quite large, some of the largest institutions in the nation. And this is just the undergraduate enrollment. Many of these schools have an additional 15,000 graduate students. Um, and the range of weighted GPA. And I don't, I always, I've done this quite a while and I am really quite surprised at the inflation of grades over the 30 years I've been watching transcripts go by. Um, an awful lot of our students going to college today have above a 4.0. And as you can see with UF, which is probably the most selective out of our public institutions, the mid 50% range of students being accepted there last year were a 4.4 to 4.6. I mean, that's just extraordinary to me. Now it is weighted and most of the students going to UF have taken the more rigorous courses. So they have a bump with the honors or the AP, IB or A dual enrollment courses. Um, the second range is the summer admit. The summer admit tends to be a little bit easier, partly because it's a smaller cohort of students and they get a little bit more advising and special help. Most of the students coming in the summer take two classes 
and they get kind of a head start. This fall, of course, all, I mean, this summer, all the students are doing that online. So if you go down there, you can see the next one for UF would be their range of SAT scores. And uh, right now we have, uh, it's 200 to 800 in the, in the verbal and the math. It's just two sections now, so 1600 is the total. And uh, you can see that that's scary high. I, I find it scary high. Um, these students are scoring in the 700s, um, almost you know, an awful lot of them in both the SAT. But it is important to notice that this is just the mid 50 percentile which means that 25% of the students admitted at these colleges have less than what is in that mid range, but then 25% have more. So they are, I have found our state institutions tend to be a little test sensitive. They're big places. I guess they feel the students need to be able to do well on a standardized testing format as most of them use that as their main criteria for evaluation. But we have seen time and time again, that our students can break the mold and they can get in with much lower scores than we may think they might. So we encourage all our students to reach for the stars because they have many aspects of their application that may shine and outshine this need of, of, the, of the testing. We do make sure that all our students have a range of schools. So they have reach schools, uh, target schools, and likely schools on their list. So in case they don't get into all their reaches or some of the reaches, certainly they'll have other options. Um, and, there's, and then the ACT is on there. That's uh, on a 36, zero, zero to one to 36 range, um, 30 to 33. I mean, that you're in the, like the 95th percentile to be scoring this high in the nation, maybe even higher. Uh, but as you can see, the others are a little, are, there is a huge range. Um, you get down to Florida Gulf Coast, which is just south of us, about an hour and 15 minutes. Um, that range is much more acceptable and much more varied. Um, and then the deadline. So most of our students want to try to get their public school applications in no later than October 1st. Although the deadlines are somewhat later, we find that many of our, most of our schools are on a rolling admission basis. And therefore, they start making decisions as early as mid-October. And so students who apply earlier may find it's easier to get in early because they start to fill up and then sometimes their criteria start to increase. That's not true for UF or FSU because they have deadlines and then they release their scores um, in January and February. So back to scholarships. Um, I think the most popular scholarship program we have in Florida is a lottery-based scholarship and it's called the Florida Bright Futures Program. Um, we like Florida Bright Futures. It does, uh, it's linked to three different criteria, however. And one is GPA. And as you look down for the academic level, um, you can see that the academic level uh, is quite high on the testing. And in fact, unfortunately, is jumping up. So it's going up from this year to um, a 1320 on the SAT. The ACT level will stay the same. It was 29 before, it's still 29. The reason for that is that the, AC, the SAT was what I would call recentered several years ago, and the legislature didn't catch up with that, so they did not change this the SAT score for a couple of years. It was actually a little easier to get that Florida Bright Futures with the SAT, uh, but but no longer. They have now made that on par. Uh, other thing that's a, requ is a requirement is uh, community service hours. You can see you need 100 hours for the academic level and the medallion, which is about 75% of tuition, uh, you need 75 hours of community service. So our students really do need to be out there and that needs to be logged in at the school. Um, it's full tuition for a Florida, Florida public school if you get um, Florida Bright Futures and that money can go with you to a Florida pub a private college as well. Um, it's not full tuition at the private college, but it is the equivalent of what a student would be uh, getting if they went to a Florida public, which today is about $6,800 a year. Um, you also get $600 for books if you're an academic scholar. Um, the medallion um, is 75% of tuition, which is around, I think, $5,200 or something like that this year. So most of our students today will be using the common application. Um, many colleges are now on the Common App. Uh, many, perhaps some of you may have used the Common Application when you applied yourself. It's been around almost 40 years. It started with about 26 colleges, and it has grown to over 
uh, sounds like 900 now nearly use it, including many of our Florida publics. And more and more have been included in this. And I, I find that really helpful because it's just one format the students will be completing. One of the things that if you have a senior mentee, I would suggest that you ask if it's possible if you could get their, um, their login. Either that or they can invite you to be an advisor for them. And that way they could, you could have access to their common app form. And that would be helpful because then you could review their application with them. You could make sure that they have completed every step of the way, that they haven't left something blank. You get an actual chance to see what their essay looks like and how they've completed their activity area. You may have con had a conversation with them about an activity that, that you think is fantastic for the colleges to know about, but they forgot to put it down on their application. So we do our best during our workshops to go through each student's application. But what happens is that our workshop will end toward the first week of, of August, and then we'll be doing monthly follow-ups, monthly meetings after that. But you know, the mentor is the one that could really help us in checking the application and making sure. This is a role that oftentimes parents would do. But because our students are first generational, many of the parents have never looked at the college application. They may not know really what to do there. And that's where you as a college graduate and as a mentor might be able to be another set of eyes. So I, I, this is something that I think would really help. And this is kind of like what you'll be seeing when you log in. And then you can see the list of colleges that they're applying to um, on it. Um, we will be doing workshops using the Common App. And if you've never used this format, you're kind of interested, please join our workshop and then you can see how our students are completing it. Um, and this is just my website. Um, I, I have a college counseling website and um, there are a, a number of useful links on there, college searches. Um, there's some all different ty types of topics. Um, one of the ones I really like is the summer enrichment page. And there's a, a special spot on that that are summer for free programs. They tend to be very selective, but they're fantastic programs for students to consider for the summer. And that kind of concludes my part of the uh, program. I'm sure there'll be some questions later, but I'm going to turn it back over to Cynthia. Thank you so much, Robin. Uh, that was wonderful. A lot of information. Uh, and please, uh, those who are not familiar with uh, what Robin has just gone over. Uh, we will be sharing with you a little handout. Uh, so uh, you'll be fine. And if you have questions, as Robin said, we are here to help you. So we can answer your questions and you know sit down with you or, or virtually uh, if you need any help. Uh, just use us, you know, in, in the in a good sense. Um, before uh, we open it up for our questions and answers, I wanted to give an opportunity to two of our mentors, Diane and Ginger, to speak briefly, just a few minutes, about your experience, um, so that newer mentors can can learn from you, and can you know be inspired and and see basically hear what they can expect from a mentoring relationship. Uh, Diane, would you like to go first? I'll unmute here. Um, I've had great experiences. And there's just a few things that I regret. And one is finding out what the fly-in programs have as a deadline and which colleges and where, because half the time, by the time my student wants to go to a certain college, the fly-in program deadline has already passed. And that's a great program where they fly these kids in free over the summer or whenever they do it. That's the one thing that, that I really regret because time is really precious. The earlier you can get in, find out who they are, get the meeting going. You've got a calendar up here that I try to follow, but these kids are busy and they, their time is, you know, our time is precious, but their time is precious. So I try to get in right away to find out who they are by being an active listener. But I try to make them right away do some automatic writing. And next time we meet, they have to go over that with me. And like, well, I don't know, just, just sit down, put a pen in your hand, and don't do anything for 15 minutes. Do not lift that pen. Just write like crazy. And a lot of things can come out of that. Little exercises like that 
help bring the conversation, help get everything flowing. It's not just eye to eye staring at each other going, oh, hi, how are you? I had a great day, that kind of thing. Um, and I also have them do a vision board. Uh, you know, the old fashioned way was cut the pieces out of a magazine and tape it down. Um, you know, they do it all digitally. Um, it gives me a, a visual and it gives them a chance to get it down there. Um, you know, there's, there's just so many ways that you can get them to tell their story. But the critical point is the sooner they tell their story, the sooner you can help them differentiate themselves from everybody else. And um, knowing that if, if, questions do come up when you are struggling with a student on any level to call or email anybody at Unidos now to, to get some support because uh, sometimes it's not a good fit um, and sometimes it can be frustrating that way. I've been very fortunate. Um, my, you know, mine have been amazing. So that's my Thank suggestion. You. <laughs> Thank you, Diane. Yeah, those were great suggestions. Thank you so much. Ginger, would you like to share a little bit about your experience and give any advice to new mentors? Sure, um, I'll just summarize some thoughts I, I have here. Um, I'm Ginger and I've been a mentor for Unidos now for about three years. And I've mentored two students, um, Missy Garcia Moya, who just finished her first year at the University of Florida, um, and Alberto Arenas, who will be attending um, University of South Florida in Tampa. Uh, Mitzi's well on her way to become a biochemist and Alberto wants to study pre-med and eventually apply to medical school. Um, being a mentor is one of the most gratifying things that you can do. Um, the students are able to learn from you um, what like things to what to expect when applying to college, visiting campuses, how to conduct a proper interview, and so on. Um, you can also provide emotional support to the students because going through this process can, um, oh no, my computer is going in and out, so I'm oh, sorry. Well, you're, yeah, we're fine, yeah. You're, so, you're, you're. Um, finishing high school can be very stressful. Um, as Robin just noted, um, some of the stresses can include um, they're the first person in our family to apply to college. They may have very limited financial resources. So sometimes just being an encourage, encouraging um, person can help them. Um, if they talk about the stresses of leaving home, you can relate to that. So the many of you guys, all of you guys went to college, so you can also talk to them about leaving home for the first time and how that can be stressful. And you don't have to pretend to know everything because you don't. The important thing is that you can be a sympathetic listener. And your needles now is there to help you um, if any serious situations come up. And the greatest thing, um, when you sit and look at the decision day, um, it's just wonderful. Just to um, listen to the students talk about the schools they applied to um, and where they decided to go. I mean, that last week was very, very gratifying for all of us mentors. Um, we're very proud of them. Um, and we do little things such as maybe taking them out to a, um, for a hamburger. Um, in my case, with the students I had, um, since they're scientifically oriented, um, I arranged, for example, for Alberto to visit my, the medical school I work at, and I took Missy to the University of uh, South um, Florida to kind of look at a biochemistry lab, a malaria research lab. So you can use your professional experiences as well as your desire to help the kids to, to help them. Um, and in conclusion, um, as I mentioned, it's very gratifying. If there's any type of serious issues, you can talk to your Needles Now staff. They're very accessible. Um, and it's just been a wonderful experience being part of this program. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I really appreciate both of you sharing about your experiences. And now we have a few minutes for Q&A. And uh, so if anybody has any urgent questions, please unmute yourself and, and ask them. Uh, if not, of course, Rowan and I are available by email or phone anytime. Um, no questions? I have a question. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Robin, have you heard anything about um, any potential changes in the bright futures as a result of this test taking? Have you heard anything at all? Is it going to stay the same or, yeah, have you heard any, anything about that? 
You know, Hector, that's a good question. Um, I actually had a, a student who was one point off on the ACT uh, and I, he wanted to go from the medallion to the academic level. And once he decided to attend UF, it made a difference for him. So he would, had planned to take the June ACT uh, one more time and then they canceled. So, um, well, it's likely to be canceled, I guess. Mm. It, they, they don't know, they, if you can believe it, they still haven't let us know, but they're supposed to let us know by uh, the 22nd, which I guess is the end of this week. Um, but as a result, there are some students who really didn't get a chance to try for that, that last time. Um, and they, I've watched, I've been looking at the Florida Bright Future site and they have a note saying that they're still, it's still under discussion. That's the last time I looked at it, which might've been a week ago. So uh, I don't know that they'll change or not. It, it's interesting though, just to mention this, uh, as you may know, the UC system, the University of California system, has decided to go test optional next year for the class of 21, which is extraordinary. Because uh, University of California for many, many years required not only the SAT or ACT, but also the SAT subject tests. Uh, they were one of the largest subject test users in the nation. So for them to go within a six year period from that to going test optional, which some schools, um, there is a list uh, and it's available on uh, fairtest.org. Uh, if you go there, they have uh, all the schools that have just in the last month uh, decided to go test optional for the class of 21. And many of them are doing a three-year test. I mean, you may already know this, but yeah, so it's kind of interesting, but no, I haven't heard anything. Yeah. My sense, you know, several years ago, Florida Bright Futures wanted to put in a requirement for the FAFSA to be completed. And I had really hoped myself that the state legislature would perhaps change the way that they looked at that and, and put a need-based component in. Because as you may know, right now, the students who best benefit from this scholarship, which is funded through lottery, um, are really moneyed families, families that are traditionally college bound, they, they have college in their, in their families and their middle income, high income families, and they're getting an advantage because they are strong test takers. And it's, that's why most of our students don't qualify, it's the testing. They're good students, they've got strong GPAs, they've taken the right classes, they do the community service hours, but they get, and in some ways you could say shortchanged with the testing. So um, we do have an ACT component. Um, another thing that I would encourage mentors, try to get our students to use the free online practice. Uh, Khan Academy, as you may know, has a wonderful tailored SAT prep program based on their, uh, their, pre, their PSAT scores. They have to download that. That is something that we do with them, but it's really difficult. I mean, it's not like, how many of us like to practice for the testing? But the reality is that needs to be, that needs to happen generally. Students need to put in a minimum of 30 hours of practice to really make a difference in their scores. So although we provide some tutoring uh, and, and courses, those courses are only about 10 or 15 hours. It's really important for the students to use those tips and practice those with the online testing. And ACT also has some free testing, which is outstanding, um, but they do have to practice. Thank you, Robin. Thank you. Anybody else has a question? I, I had just a couple things um, that I wrote, wrote down that, um, the mentor follow-up, I think that is probably something that Cynthia and I are really hoping will be something that will be helpful. I do think that being able to have a regular communication, make sure at the end of every meeting that you have a to-do list, the next best steps, an agreement there. You might wanna jot down what those are gonna be and you put that in your review. And then in addition, make absolutely certain that you come to an agreement in terms of when your next meeting is with a full anticipation that your mentee will be there. Uh, if your mentee misses, please let us know. I think that in the past, that's been a kind of a bit of a missing component. And some of our mentors are waiting for the students to come to them, to utilize the mentor. But I think what happens is many of our students are kind of, um, maybe they may feel intimidated initially when they are trying to establish a relationship with someone they really don't know. And so it's, it's really up to the mentor to try to encourage them to recognize that no, this is something that you want and that you anticipate and that you look forward to and that you have a plan for and that they're welcome. 
And I think that the, the, hopefully our students will be a little bit more responsible in uh, taking advantage of the opportunities that the mentors offer. That's, that's correct. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Robin. We are, okay, 7.30. Um, so unless anybody has any questions, um, we want to respect your time. And, um, and thank you question. for- Do you have a question? Yes, go ahead. N Nadia, did you have oh, a question? Oh, yeah. Just a quick question. Um, how many athletes do you usually get each year? Is that something you see frequently? No, I mean, we do. Have, we have a soccer player this year um, that's going to be going off to Wash U. That is a Division three school. Uh, he also looked to be recruited. Uh, but I, I feel quite confident that his engagement and leadership and his essay that all reflected this strong sense of teamwork uh, made an impact on his admission there. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Wash U is one of those schools that can fully meet need. So, you know, there are our students end up with fifty, fifty five, sixty thousand dollars of grant money institutional given from the from the school and then many of our students qualify for Pell Grant funding that's another about seven thousand dollars many of them do college work study many of them get SEOG grants or another two thousand dollars so that in, in, it is possible that if a student is a hard worker and really puts together a good application they they can afford to go anywhere they want to go yeah, yeah we we've rarely had uh, students who have were division one level in any kind of sport We've often had students who thought they were division one. We've often had students who thought they're performing arts, they would be on Broadway. Uh, so that's one of the hardest challenges for us is to objectively assess their, their potential. We did have one swimmer a couple of years ago that was a division one swimmer. But for the most part, most of our students are, are, are the ones that have done that, I think, are more Division three, and I think they need to understand Division three. Also, they also need athletes. They also need people in the orchestra. Mm -hmm. They also need, and they, the, even though they don't give scholarships per se, it does help them in the admissions process, and they probably don't understand that. But we don't. We rarely get Division one level athletes. I think only one that I can remember. Yeah, and not Nadia. I I would mention, and you probably know this, that. Outside some of the key money-making sports like football and basketball and sometimes mm -hmm. baseball, most of our students that are maybe involved in soccer and, and swimming, they have to be part of leagues. They, it's more than yeah. just what goes on at the high school yeah, level. Yeah, no. they have to be a club sport. Yeah, and the, and the clubs can be expensive. And many of our students just don't have the time set. Many of them are working or they have family responsibilities or they just don't have access. And that's a shame, but that's part of what I think we're finding. Okay. Great. Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, again, please uh, use us, not in a good sense. Yeah, contact us if you need information. Uh, I, I know that maybe in the past we perhaps we yeah, were not so organized in, sen in, in terms of uh, what we expected from the mentoring program or who you, you had to report or who you could ask for information. Well, here we are. Uh, we plan on doing this type of uh, training with updated information uh, more than once a year. Mm -hmm. And uh, we hope that we can join us. Hope that you can also join the Google group. And when you connect with your mentee, let us know how we can help you. Uh, it, it, we want it to be a, a fruitful experience for both of you and, and that you enjoy so much that you want to continue mentoring over the years. So thank you for joining us tonight. And uh, we'll be sending you by email uh, the, the PowerPoint and also some handouts. Um, and again, if you have any questions, let us know. Thank have you. Have a great evening. Thank you. Good Thank night. You. Thank, you. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Bye.